Welcome to Certification Exam Rapid Training, or CERT. Why so rapid? Because if you're like me, you have limited time. Plus, there are several multiple hour sessions out there along with detailed learning paths. We have delivered sessions like these shorter sessions for years at Microsoft internal and external events from TechEd to Microsoft Ready and Microsoft Ignite. But lately, these types of preparation sessions no longer exist. So this is why I've created these one hour reviews like we used to when we had live conventions with people waiting to come into the session rooms. Hopefully those days will return again soon. Now there are no crowds and no waiting. This is a recorded session which you can review and repeat as many times as needed and listen to them anytime and anywhere to help make it stick. I do give an honorary mention to Stanislav Kwastanya when I was looking for resources, his slide deck came up, which was also pretty detailed. While I don't think it's presently updated to the latest exam version, it is still very well done with a ton of links also. Just search by his name and AZ500, and you should quickly come across his preparation guide for Microsoft AZ500 Microsoft Azure Security Technologies Certification. Note that this exam is being refreshed on January 27th, of 2021, which may have already passed by the time that you watch this recording. But I do want to make note of it as I do in any session, so are you aware of what version of the exam this CERT session was based upon? The slides with all of the links will be made available on my blog at aka.ms slash markgrimes. The recordings for each section will be made available internally for those at Microsoft as well as externally on YouTube for our customers and our partners. I'll include a link to that once they are all done on my blog. Note that the aka.ms slash cert link will only work inside of Microsoft if you are a blue or orange badge employee. I always like to provide a little of my background. The main relevant callouts are that I've been a Microsoft certified trainer for over two decades, and I've worked on Azure projects now for almost as long as it's been around. I was one of the first people inside of Microsoft to deliver these specific Azure certification preparation sessions. I have also delivered many sessions externally when Microsoft Ignite was still a physical event. Also, if you want to see my top Azure, Azure Stack, and healthy eating resources, I do blog from time to time at aka.ms slash Mark Grimes. Whenever I make a newer post, I also tweet them in Twitter at Mark B. Grimes. This PowerPoint has reference links provided on every slide. Additionally, there are many hidden slides from the past version of this exam. Most all of those will still be relevant. I handpicked these links as if I was studying for the exam just like you. In order to present this as a tool to you, I have to take the perspective of a student preparing to take the exam. The net benefit to you is that I'm doing much of the research work for you so you don't have to. How do I find all these links? Well, I always start with the exam objectives for AZ-500 at Microsoft Learning, and then build the PowerPoint based on the top level learning objectives first. That frames out the four sections in this presentation. Then I walk through the line items and search for them only in Microsoft Docs Online. Why only there? Because when the exam writers make the exams, they absolutely positively must link every question back to an official source. And since this is a Microsoft certification exam, you can almost always bet that that link is on Microsoft Docs. Note, this does not replace the work that you will need to do. You need to put in the level of effort required. More on that after a couple of slides. You will have to go through the links provided on topics that you are not real strong on already. And if you review the exam objectives and see something that is new and or foreign to you, and I did not cover it, well then, go look it up. In any review, it's impossible to cover everything. So if you've done your study and, and review, my goal is to get you to three to five more questions answered when you do take the exam. Why that many? Because in all of my years of taking exams and getting feedback from people, the one thing I almost always hear from people that don't pass the exam is that they missed it by just a few questions. Therefore, my goal is to help bridge that gap. What this session does not do, we cannot share actual exam questions or answers, nor where to find brain dumps which show actual exam questions or answers. 
and there is no guarantee for passing the exam. As I mentioned, I just want to help tip you over and to give you some tips and tricks and resources for things that you may not have been able to dig up so quickly and easily. Level of effort required to prepare. So people ask me this all the time, so I wrote it out for you. Here's what I think is required to prepare. A small level of effort. If you are very experienced in Azure and Azure security, and you are knowledgeable around level three to 400 in most areas or topics, it'll probably take five to 20 hours of effort. And I know that's quite a range, so let me explain that. If you haven't taken exams in a long time or never from Microsoft certification, you may have to do some practice exams to kind of get the feel of how those questions work, how they're laid out and those sort of things. Also, even though you may be very experienced in level three to 400, you may find in reviewing the exam objectives, there are some things that are just totally foreign to you. It, uh, there's so much to cover. Medium level of effort. You know a few things well, but you're not three to 400 level in most. So we're gonna shift that to 20 to 40 hours of effort. Now, when I first started doing these several years ago, my main strong suit was identity, Azure Active Directory, synchronization, federation. But then when it got to compute and storage, which at that time were brand spanking new to me, I really had to dig pretty, pretty deep in those. So 20 to 40 hours, again, if you're working a full week, it's kind of hard to work at, uh, at 40 more hours on top of a 40 hour work week. So again, reduce the ridiculous, break it down, take a month out that you're gonna shoot for this. You schedule the exam 30 to 60 days out. You go, okay, if I have 30 days, that's four weeks. And so that's 10 hours a week. I'm gonna do one to two hours in the evening every night. One hour is not too bad. And then the weekend, maybe get up a little bit earlier or maybe stay up late a night or two and knock off the remaining of those hours going through all the line by line exam objectives. Large effort, large level of effort. If you are brand spanking new, never really touched it, you can spell it and that's about it. Security is really not your thing. You got a lot of studying ahead. So you are the candidate definitely in addition to these slides that you probably wanna go through some of those learning paths. I'd recommend, I think the Microsoft learning path that's on the Azure um, AZ-500 learning objectives page is a really good one to take a look at. And again, if you have access to LinkedIn Learning or O'Reilly, uh, you can also go through those, but you have to weigh out the time and level of effort for that large effort. And in that case, if your brand's making new, I'd probably shoot six to eight weeks out to book that exam and then start breaking it down objective by objective, week by week, night by night, weekend by weekend. These are the primary links if you have any questions on the exam objectives for AZ-500 or any other exam for that matter. Note also that if you browse toward the bottom of the exam objectives page, you will also find six learning paths with 40 modules that will walk you through several hours of content. You can take them at your own pace and come back anytime to pick up where you left off or even repeat it if the topic is not one of your strong areas. As I just mentioned recently, if you are newer to this and or you wanna go through a very long online course, you can go through this one on LinkedIn Learning, provided you have access. Uh, this link is just one of the first of five sessions available. These will take five and a half hours to complete following their timelines. An even longer course is available at O'Reilly.com with just over eight hours of content. If you do also use LinkedIn Learning, O'Reilly, and or the Microsoft Learning Paths, make sure to then return back to this search session to help with those three to five extra questions that I hope to assist you with. Using multiple methods to study and learning will also simply reinforce what you have learned by hearing different people present content in different ways. Also in the previous slide, I mentioned that this deck is focused on the newer deltas, but let me caveat that the hidden slides are the older content, which are still relevant. So for those of you that are brand, brand new and really need to put a lot of hours into it, this deck will still be useful because I started this deck with the session that I delivered last year internally at Microsoft. What a bargain, take one Microsoft certification exam and you get a complete certification, the Microsoft Certified Security Engineer Associate. 
With security being one of the top concerns of organizations worldwide, you just can't go wrong by adding this to your resume or at the end of your email signature. Protecting security should be everyone's responsibility. This effort and certification shows that you are focused on improving the overall security posture of your organization or of another's if you are a consultant or an advisor. Security should be job number one in today's world where assumed breach and zero trust are at the top of everyone's minds these days. One final note to be aware of in preparing, most questions cover features that are GA or general availability. The exam may contain questions on preview features if those features are commonly used. Now, how do we determine that? How do we know? It's really kind of a judgment call. There's nothing called out, but if you think, feel it is a commonly used preview feature, or if not, you might want to just be aware of what it is, what it does, and a little bit more information about that. Next up, let's walk through each grouping of the exam objectives.